Welcome to Electron Online. What we're going to do here is look at the key of solving second order circuits. The reason why we want to approach it in a very systematic way is because if we don't, it gets quite complicated. So what we're always trying to do is do the following four things. We want to find the initial and final values of the current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor before the switch is closed or the switch is open or a source is turned on. What were the conditions prior to the event that starts at t equals zero? So we indicate that when t is less than zero, zero minus, that means less than zero, what was the current and what was the voltage? And then we want to do it again right after the switch is closed. The very moment the switch is closed or the very moment the switch is open, depending upon what's happening, or the very moment a circuit uh, or a, a voltage source or current source is turned on, again, you want to establish what the current is right afterwards and what the voltage is right afterwards. And typically, in a second-order circuit, those results will be the same right before and right after the switch is open or closed because the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. It takes time for them to change, and so therefore we can assume that the results here will typically be the same. What we want to do next is we want to establish the change in the current with respect to time inside the inductor and the change of the voltage with respect to time across the capacitor during the transient period. There will be a period where we go from the initial state to the final steady state. And during that transient period, we want to be able to calculate the change in the current and the change in the voltage. Again, at the very moment the switch is closed. What's happening at that very moment? And keep in mind that to find the rate of change of the current with respect to time for the inductor is the instantaneous voltage across the inductor divided by the inductor and the instantaneous change of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time is equal to the current, the instantaneous current towards the capacitor divided by the capacitance. Finally, once we reach steady state, we need to find the current through the inductor at time equals, well, when it approaches infinity, long enough for steady state to have reached. Typically, that doesn't take an infinite amount of time, of course, and we want to establish the voltage across the capacitor after a lot of time has passed. So again, we're looking for the current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor. Now, of course, this is a simplistic look at second order functions and second order circuits because there's usually much more going on than that. We'll still have to use the concept of KCL, the current, the Kirchhoff current loop methodology, and the KVL, meaning we're going to go around meshes and around circuits and loops and find the voltage sum around the loop to be able to solve for some of these concepts. But we just want to approach it in a general fashion, in a very systematic fashion. We may even want to number it out. Number one, we're going to do this. Number two, we do this. Number three, we do this. Number four, we do this in a very systematic fashion. So we're going to show you some examples now to help you figure out how to do that in some of these, and at first, some fairly simple circuits. So stay tuned, and we'll show you the methodology of finding all the key values of a circuit like that so you can actually solve it, and that's how it's done. 